today in our 2011 Nissan Juke, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install the Curt Class 1 trailer hitch receiver. That's what our hitch looks like when it's installed. You can see the cross tube is visible. However, it is nice and tucked up close to the bottom of the bumper fascia, so it's not going to take away from the design of the vehicle. This is going to be a Class 1 hitch, so it's going to require the use of Class 1 accessories. It's going to be inch and a quarter by inch and a quarter receiver tube opening. Reinforced collar, give it a little extra stability there. Hitch pin hole is going to be half inch in diameter. It's going to take a standard half inch pin. Now it does not, the pin and clip does not come with the hitch, however, it can be found here at eTrailer.com. We're going to have plate style safety chain loops. It's going to be a welded plate on the bottom of our cross tube and receiver tube. You can see we're going to have fairly large openings. It's going to give us plenty of room for different size hooks. Now as far as our weight capacities go, we're going to have a 200 pound max tongue weight, which is a downward pressure on the inside of the receiver tube, and a 2,000 pound gross trailer weight, which is a trailer plus the load included. I do recommend checking the owner's manual of your Nissan. To make sure the vehicle can withstand that amount of weight, you're going to pick the lowest number between the vehicle and the hitch. Now let's give you a few measurements to help you when deciding on any hitch mount accessories you may need, such as a bike rack or cargo carrier. From the center of the hitch pin hole to the outermost part of the bumper, it's going to be about four and a half inches. This number is important for any of your hitch mount accessories that may fold up against your vehicle. From the ground to the top innermost part of your receiver tube, it's going to be about 12 inches. Now let's show you how to get this installed. As far as the installation goes, it's pretty simple and straightforward. Uh, there is one hole you're going to have to open up on the bottom of the frame rail on the driver's side. Other than that, it's going to come with all necessary hardware. There's not going to be any welding required. First thing we need to do is lower our exhaust. We're going to have three rubber hangers that we need to remove. You're going to have one here at the back of your muffler, one here towards the front of your muffler, and then one right in front of your muffler. I suggest spraying them down with some lubricant to help them slide off the post. Uh, if you don't have a lubricant, soapy water works just fine. We'll take the pry bar. We're just going to pry, pry the end off, just like that. Do the same thing with the other two. We're going to have a few holes down here in the bottom. We need to enlarge one of them to uh, at least one inch. We've got to be able to get the head of our bolt through in a spacer block. I'm going to use a step bit to do that. Just like that. Take some spray paint, spray that bare metal to reduce the risk of any rust or corrosion later on. Now we're going to take our pull wire, we're going to have two holes here on the outside of our frame rail. We're going to go to this most rear one, we're going to put the spring end of our pull wire in through that hole, we're going to come out this hole. Then you're going to take a carriage bolt, go ahead and put your spacer block on, thread your carriage bolt onto your pull wire, take your spacer block, feed it up in the hole and then feed your carriage bolt up in the hole. You're going to pull it out like this. And go ahead and set it back down inside the frame rail. Go ahead and pull your bolts back out. We're going to put on the half inch flat washers onto each one of these bolts. Next for the next set of hands, we're going to get our hitch into place. We're going to feed our pull wires through the corresponding holes in our hitch. We're going to raise over top of our exhaust on our passenger side. We're going to take our carriage bolt, we're going to go through our hitch, and then through our tow hook. On the bottom of our tow hook, we're going to put a small spacer block and then a flange nut. Go ahead and pull your wires off and install your flange nuts for your two outside bolts here on your frame rail. Next we're going to tighten and then torque all of our hardware to the specifications and the instructions. Once you've got all your hardware tightened and torqued down, go ahead and reinstall your exhaust. That'll do it for a look at an installation on the current Class 1 trailer hitch receiver on our 2011 Nissan Juke.